There's a new street fighter on your windowsill. The weapon is peace. The word is... Hello there, gang, and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behavior, the Earth's mightiest pop culture video podcast. So take off your pants, crack a beer, and let's talk toys. Let's talk about the top 25 Marvel Legends of 2021. Yeah, yeah, 25. People say that I rag on Marvel Legends all the time, and I do, but also I give credit where it's due because my goodness, we have had some fantastic releases this year, and I don't want to limit myself to 10 because there are so many that have been like, yes, this guy. So therefore, top 25. Before we start, if you want to pick up a displaying model behavior t-shirt, help out the channel, then you can do by going to teespring.com. Check the link in the description below. And also, if you want to like, share, and subscribe, that would be awesome. <laughs> Alright, so guys, 25 best Marvel Legends of 2021. Let's do it. Coming in at the number 25 spot, we have... Retro J. Jonah Jameson. I know, random, not even like a superhero type figure, just a, just a dude. But, first of all, it opens up the door for more civilian characters, and that is really cool. Actually, you could dare say, this has been the year of civilian characters, of more wider circles of people supporting cast getting represented, and that's so cool, especially for a Spider-Man fan who loves Flash and Harry and all those different characters. Robbie Robertson, May and Ben, you never know, the possibilities are endless. And J. Jonah Jameson is kind of kicking things off. And especially, this dude was like one of the first ever characters to appear in Spider-Man. Spider-Man, like he deserves the recognition and he got a great action figure to go with it. The separately sculpted vest here, the waistcoat, the tie. I was complaining recently about Morlan, how his entire upper body, coat, waistcoat, everything was just molded together. It looked really cheap and tacky. Whereas JJ, we've got the separate piece here, the separate tie. So, so nice. Then of course he comes with the, did he come with the rolled up bugle or was that from Gwen? I'm going to assume he came with it just to give him extra points. If he didn't though, I'll stand up to that one. But he did come out with the actual wide edition of the Daily Bugle, which was so great because there was so much love in that because it actually had little photos that were taken with Marvel Legends. I thought, oh, guys, that is the extra thinking outside the box that just makes such a big, big difference. I love it. And even I'm going to give away or accept the fact that this isn't even an original head sculpt. This is the J. Jonah Jameson head from The Chameleon. I'm not even mad about it because it's a great expression. You can just see him going, Get me pictures of Spider-Man! Wonderful. And even the fact that he has the awful smart suited shoes that you could never stand up. I managed to get him in a pose where he just about holds it and then he's got the changeable hands with the wagging finger. J. Jonah Jameson absolutely nailed. This next entry was a gift from a friend of the show, and what a beautiful one it is. Captain Carter from the What If Wave. Now, this was a huge kind of surprise for me in 2021, was how much I enjoyed the What If show. I thought it would be good. I enjoy pretty animation, and I thought, yeah, this will be nice. It'll be kind of standalone stories, bit of a throwaway kind of thing. And then, no, it all ties together. It tells a bigger, wider tale, and Captain Carter really gets her time to shine. This is so great, and I'm sure it's lovely for Hayley Atwell to have her character kind of live on in the MCU. That's just really, really cool. And the, what they've done here with the sculpting on, on this, it's just, it's just got love and attention. It's not some boring reuse, repaint. It's all new, and you can see the Union Jack on here, all the details on the legs, the boots. It's all sculpted specifically for her and looks so good. Just the graphic design of the Agent Carter, the Captain Carter look with the flag, with the styling, really eye-popping because it's got, with the circular, uh, sort of red, white, and blue. It looks also so wonderfully Battle of Britain, Royal Air Force, World War II kind of motifs here. So it all goes in so well. Then the beautifully, beautifully sculpted face that has that wonderful, not quite 
uh, comic, but not quite animated. It, it, it fits perfectly. Like, she could go with the comic figures, and she wouldn't look out of place at all, but she still has that wonderfully animated kind of look. Even the paint with the rosy kind of cheeks blended in there, the wonderful detail on the eyes, they've done such a great job. If you wanted me to, like, say, what's a good example of a well-done Marvel legend? Boom, there it is, Captain Carter. Absolutely terrific. Now then, a bit of a mixed bag of a figure here, but still one that deserves recognition is Modular Iron Man. I've been wanting this design for the longest time. The 90s TV show cartoon Iron Man. This is my generation of growing up and reading comics and watching all the media. So I was so pleased to get this. Now, this is a bit snake bit for me because I got a dodgy figure. His shoulder is, is broken and stuck just the way it came out of the packaging. His joints down here are super loose and wobbly. Kind of turned me off Marvel Legends to an extent because that Actually, this was part of a generally bad wave of botches and smeared paint and it wasn't a good time. The Ursa Major wave, that was just a bit snake bit to be honest. But still, I can't discount the fact that this is a figure sculpt model design that I've wanted for the longest time. And if the figure was perfect without any random factory defects, it would be perfect! So I'm not gonna go with just specifically my version of the figure, but the figure in general. With the lovely shiny chrome gold paint and the red, he's got the nice blast effects as well, and just the fact that it's an iconic 90s Iron Man looks amazing next to War Machine. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and still give him a good place on the list of the best legends of the year. We've got two Iron Men back to back now with Stealth Iron Man. Now this one is kind of funny because it's just a repaint. It's just a repaint of the 80th anniversary Iron Man. There's nothing particularly new going on here except for the fact that he's so pretty. I mean, he really is. This deep, dark, kind of midnight blue chrome going on here. It just looks so cool. When I first saw pictures of the wave, I thought, oh, that's a wave filler. I'm going to be able to skip that one, except I won't because I want the bath. And then I got him and instantly I was like, oh, no. No, this is, this is lovely. I'm not even going to sell this. This is just, he's so pretty and then you throw in the red kind of blast effects and stuff or you got the chest there as well the little red slits on the mouth and the eyes it kind of counterbalances everything else with the deep dark midnight shading absolutely love this figure so random but so pretty he's a real winner one coming up now which i think is like the people's champ is Frogman. What a bonkers, ridiculous, wacky, loving figure. Like, there's a love that has gone into this because who's Frogman? Like, uh, the deep, deep cuts of the Marvel Universe, we, we know of Frogman, but I think it's fair to say there's no one who's placing him as one of their all-time classic superheroes. But then we get this figure and all of a sudden it's just like, yes, we didn't know we needed this, but my goodness, now that we have him, He's just wonderful. With the original portly Dr. Octopus body, they've done such a great job. First of all, with the sculpting of this frog head, so unusual. I mean, Marvel Legends don't make things like this, <laughs> you know? But it's so goofy, and that's what the character is. He's got the backpack on here, which kind of conveniently covers up the Dr. Octopus portholes on the back, so that's kind of handy. But then the big flipper feet, but then also with the springs, in his heels. They could have got away without putting springs in his heels. We wouldn't have noticed, or I wouldn't. You guys probably would have. You're sharper than I am. But still, we've got them. They're just wonderful. A couple of different hands as well, and on the whole, Frogman, just joyous. An unusual one now, perhaps. We have Moira, or Mary Jane, as I have her here. But Moira McTaggart from the House of X wave, again, kind of like I was saying with JJ, we're getting some more civilian type characters in. Even though I know Moira isn't really a civilian, she does have a mutant power, blah, blah, blah. But kind of a normal looking person in everyday clothes that allow you to do some nice little kit bashes. And this is a perfect 
kit bash considering that we got the Mary Jane head with Gwen Stacy we needed a perfect body for her and since she's kind of in this 60s kind of vibe we get the 60s kind of look it just goes perfectly but then Moira gets extra points for innovation as well because we had the removable lab coat which is what they went on to use with Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four Retro Wave 2 such a clever bit of engineering just Pop the arms out, coat goes on, back on, like so clever, really versatile, and it gives you so many more options for your figures. Also, Moira had two different heads, different looks, so much you could play around with and kit bash and have fun with. So even though Moira's head isn't present in this review, she absolutely deserves her place in the top 25. It's time now for a big, brilliant blast of orange with Tigra. Again, another figure that I was like, ah, I'll get her for the West Coast Avengers, I suppose, but I'm not that excited to have her. And then I got my hands on her and it's like, yeah, okay, you kind of won me over now. Because they've put a lot of effort into the face and there's two faces to choose from, which is always great. Throw in an extra head and instantly my feeling of value for money goes up. You know, it's as simple as that. So the fact that we've got this great snarling one, I mean, I always like to have my characters with as animated a look on their face as possible. So the kind of look, she's got the different hands as well. And originally I thought this was just a boring repaint, but then no, she actually does have little flecks of hair sculpted on there to give her some more details. I love that. It's just an extra touch that they didn't need to do. They could have got away without doing it, but they did it and it makes a big difference. We've got the wonderful tail that you can actually articulate all the way around there. The fact that even like a little bikini has the, the, the teeth sculpted on there. They went a little bit harder than they necessarily needed to. They could have got away with making a D plus figure. And instead they went, no, 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 no. Let's actually put some more effort in here. And it shows, is there a bit of a downside? Is she too orange? Arguably, yeah. It would have been nice to have maybe got some more shading, some more yellow to kind of tone down the vibrant Cheeto kind of look. But still, I'm willing to let that go because the rest of it, especially with that great face sculpt and expression, really has her ranking high on the list. Next up, we have a figure that I don't have in hand anymore because I sold him. But that doesn't mean that I don't think he was one of the best figures of the year. Who am I talking about? The Fallen Silver Surfer. So then why did you sell him, Dave? Well, because I needed the money. That's why. There you go. That's going to happen a lot as we go down this list. Great figures that I loved so much. I sold. But Fallen Silver Surfer, I can still picture him in my mind's eye. That beautiful chrome hood ornament kind of look. He looked the bomb. The only reason I sold him is because we're getting the new Surfer with Galactus. So I was like, okay, I only need one version of Norin Rad. I need some money now. So Chrome Silver Surfer, you gots to go. But it was hard to let him go because he just looked so good. Because also with that dark chrome look, he could easily be a Silver Surfer. He doesn't have to be the Fallen Silver Surfer. It's however you want to kind of fudge it. And I just think that replication, the way he looked metallic, even though he's just a lump of plastic, that's the difference a great paint job can make. And that was a great paint job. And my goodness, he looked good on my shelf. Speaking of figures that I sold, even though they were really good, the Omega Sentinel. I sold the entire House of X wave all in one go besides Moira. So she had to go as well because also I would have had nowhere to put her. I don't have modern X-Men, but that doesn't mean she wasn't a great figure. First of all, we get multiple looks and they're very diverse. So you've got the bald, red, cyborg looking scary face. And then you also have, well, the other cyborg looking scary face, this time the half look with the hair. But then also she's got the interchangeable arms as well with the hand cannon on there. That's what I love when you can mix things up and play around with them. Plus, I just loved the aesthetic design, the red and the white. I just think it was a cool, futuristic robot kind of look. And actually, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm thinking, man, I could have kept her and put her in with like my cosmic type figures. Maybe, 
maybe I was a bit too quick to sell her, but it's done now. Now, a gripe a lot of people had with this, which I can totally buy in on as well, is that her skin tone was not correct. Uh, the uh, ethnicity, her skin tone in the comic books, the character should have a darker skin tone. And then people could say like, oh, they're kind of whitewashing this character. I don't think it was an intentional thing. It was just kind of an oversight. But still, it was a sloppy oversight. Like, come on, guys, that's... That's not cool. So that does detract a little bit from the logic behind the figure. But still, the actual sculpting and the quality of this particular Marvel Legend, she still looked really good. And completing the trifecta of figures that I don't have in my possession anymore, it's Miles from the Spider-Verse. Yep, this dude, again, so much love and care and sculpting and originality went into the figure because this was unusual in that the Spider-Verse figures, they don't have the same proportions and style of other Marvel Legends. So it was a whole new thing they had to do. You ain't reusing anything on Miles Morales. This is all new sculpting that goes into this. And the effort that was put in is on display in the figure. He was a perfect representation in Marvel Legends form of Spider-Verse Miles. And you could have both versions with the mask or with the great unmasked animated head that looked so expressive. He was a really, really great adaption of that figure, of that design, of that character. Loved him so much. I sold the whole Spider-Verse. I wasn't gonna pick and choose. I wasn't gonna be like, you can stay, you can go. No, no, no. They all got to go purely for money and space. But if that was infinite, you'd better believe Miles would still be on my shelf. All right, we're back to figures that I actually still own with Dormammu from the villain's wave. And my goodness, I just love bright and colorful. And look at that guy. That's exactly what that is. Bright and colorful. And it's difficult because there were a few characters from that wave. I just realized I don't even have Ultron on this list. And Ultron was great too. Why didn't I include him? Maybe I should have, but hey, I've made the list. I've sat down now, I've pressed record, and this is what you get. No going back. So we have Dormammu. Now, I love how kind of camp and kitsch and old school his design is with the spiky boots on here, his wonderful kind of headdress that goes around, and of course, translucent flames. Now, this figure does have its detractors, and I understand that. First of all, a big one is that the flames are the same kind of color as his face mask, and that's a real shame because you lose a lot of the nuance. It would have made a lot more sense to have more yellowy flames, so his face mask stands out more. It's more bright and bold, and honestly, yeah, you're absolutely right. Hasbro, what's up with that? You, you, you kind of dropped the ball there. That would have made so much sense. Like, did no one look at the prototype and go, maybe we should make the flames more distinct? Nah, psh, it'll be fine. It's a shame. You dropped the ball, you missed out on a good opportunity to make a good figure. Great, but hey, we're here now. And what we do have is wonderful with the brilliant shoulder pads, spikes going on here. We get the extra little whipply flame effects, which are not particularly unique, but they work with the figure. And then the great sort of mask on the face, even though it doesn't stand out as much as it should do, is still very nice. A bit of a detraction, of course, is that also his headdress, the black bit here, it has a tiny little clip under the chin and that's the only thing keeping it in place. That's a little bit annoying. So he has his faults, but because he is big, bright and colorful, he definitely makes my list. This next one guaranteed had to be on the list. He's my little Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Look at him, such a bonkers, ridiculous character, right up there with Frogman when it comes to silliness. A half-naked big bear guy in bondage gear and a big old mallet with his headdress. It's just ridiculous, he's got sandals on his feet, but oh, he's so much fun. Again, they put the same amount of love into this character as they did with Tigra, for example. A C-list character, let's be fair, come on. But still, they went the extra mile. Two different heads as well, so you've got the joking, silly looking head, which is a lot of fun. And the kind of look, so that's really cool. Then you've got the big old H belt buckle here. It's like he doesn't have much going on with this costume, but what he does have They've captured really, really well. He's got a nice amount of articulation as well for a big chunky character. Sometimes that can be a bit of a hindrance when it comes to putting them in dynamic poses. But this guy, no, he, he looks great. He looks like Hercules about to spring into battle. 
This has made me want to keep my West Coast Avengers. I was thinking of downsizing my Avengers team, but having this dude, it's like, nah, he's got to have a home. He's got to have the B-list Avengers, and there, he fits right in. A figure that until only recently was still in my hands, but I've since let him go, is the Armadillo. Now, the Armadillo was one of the, well, I think it must have been the biggest builder figure we got this year. This guy was so big, hefty, and chunky, and he had some detractions. Is that even a word, detractions? You have detractors about your shortcomings, but you don't have detractions. I'll look it up. But still, what I loved about him was a couple of things. First of all, the size. Fantastic. I love the fact that we have Marvel Legends collections that have characters big and small and in between and they all fit together. So having this dude who's bigger than even your average big characters, that was brilliant. And also just the fact that it was such an obscure villain. I mean, this year we got Ursa Major, we got Zemnu, we got Armadillo. Such random deep cuts that are really just like a reward to the hardcore 616 comic book readers. And I really, really appreciate that. I love that. Now, there are some shortfalls or some detractors, detractions, if you will, mainly being that his, his car pace, his armor, prevents his arms from really having much articulation. That's a real shame. And I appreciate that it's not easy to engineer around that. You could have engineered around it by doing a lot more sculpting and probably making the figure financially not viable. That's the thing. If they had sculpted like the armor to be higher than his shoulders and then sculpted separate shoulder pieces for armor, that would have worked. Logistically, you could have done it, but I'm sure it would have just taken them over budget and it is what it is. It's all about dollars and cents. But what we got for our dollars and cents was still a really awesome builder figure. Now a figure that I never actually owned, but I've held in my hands and Boy, was I tempted to part with the money for it as well. The Hydra Stomper. Basically, I'm just waiting to hopefully maybe get this second hand if someone's selling one cheap because I don't like the fact it was very expensive. And I thought, no, he's good, but I just can't justify that expenditure. But when I have my, you know, Captain Carter in hand, I do think, gosh, you... She'd look really good next to the Hydra Stomper. And again, it's a great example of Hasbro going, let's make something a little bit excessive. Let's, let's make a big deluxe figure and see if people will pay for it. And to be honest, we did. So there you go. And it's just a perfect recreation. Again, it's great because it's a recreation of an animated character. So you can recreate that in plastic like so much easier. It looks like they've just plucked it off the screen. So the Hydra Stomper with all the details going on there, I think next to Agent Carter looks so awesome. So possibly next year, I might see if I can find a cheap one. But in the meantime, I want to recognize what a cool figure that was. Now we've got someone who I feel was a bit of a sleeper hit of the year, and that is Riri Williams, Ironheart. Now, when you think about this figure, this is all unique sculpting going on here. Un unless I'm wrong. I mean, stop me if I'm wrong, but I think this is exclusive to Riri. Unless this was like a rescue figure or, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow from the MCU or something. I don't think so. I think this is all unique to her. But even if it's not, what they've done with it is really, really pretty. First of all, we've got an unmasked head. And that makes a huge difference because it's not easy to capture the likeness of a young, youthful, teenage character without making it look weird, I guess. Because especially with the comic book versions, it's not MCU realistic. It's not Spider-Verse super animated. It's somewhere in the middle and that can be really tough. But no, they nailed it. They nailed it so well. I think this face sculpt is possibly... Possibly the best face sculpt of the year. I'm saying it now. I'm calling it. There you go. Am I right? <laughs> Who knows? But still, I really, really dig what they've done here. Throw in, of course, the fact that you've got the great Ironheart mask helmet design, which is a nice tweak on the classic Iron Man look. I think that's great. Then they threw in the blasters and the smoke effects. I'm not too sure about smoke effects, though. It's like the Iron Man armor, that's not like... It doesn't run on diesel, you know? <laughs> Where's the smoke coming from? It should be all digital and repulsor and that kind of thing. But, ah, I'll allow it. Still, her with her blast effects, the great different heads, and the all-over unique sculpting. Really love this figure. Now, you want a big hoss of a character? Sabretooth from the Age of Apocalypse. Omimya! 
this guy, he's almost a problem because this is an average figure. This is a normal retail 20 bucks action figure. You pay the same price for this figure as you do for a cheap ass lazy skinny repaint. That's the problem I have sometimes. Spider-Man 2099 on the retro card costs the same as this big beautiful boy. Where's the logic there Hasbro? Where's the logic? More to the point, I paid that money, so what are you doing Dave? You're complaining about your own stupid decisions. Ah, still, Sabretooth, absolutely phenomenal. This, this is how you get your money's worth. And also they could have just, just given us the buck and, and that's it pretty much, but no. They gave us two fantastic head sculpts. My biggest problem is knowing which one to use because they're both really great. You've got the plain white eyes, snarling, scary looking saber tooth here. And then you've got the more jovial looking Victor Creed who looks so great with the proper eyes, with the pupils and this wonderful kind of smirk on his face. Looks so badass. Either one, I just swap them out every couple of weeks or so just so I can have that variety because both face sculpts deserve to be kind of recognized. The fact that you pair him up with Wild Child, you got the chain he can hold on to and they make such a great team together, that's absolutely phenomenal. But on the whole, yeah, Sabretooth was arguably the best part of arguably the best wave of arguably a year. It's too many arguably's. Back to my empty-handed review now with Peter B. Parker. We return to the Spider-Verse with my spirit animal, Peter B. Parker. The, <laughs> the Spider-Man who kind of let himself go, but is still trying his best. And again, just like Miles, they captured that animated Spider-Verse style so well to perfection. He's got his unmasked head, which is, well, both heads are unmasked. Or does he have three? I think it's just two. He's got the regular unmasked head with the hair, and he's got the unmasked head with the, the like, almost like a beanie type Spider-Man mask, which is such a great touch. I love all the expressions of Peter B. Parker. He's got the, the, the drink as well, the fast food drink, which is a great accessory for other people who just want to, like, do some photography and stuff. Really good little prop to have. Then again, all the different sculpting. He's got the, the jacket, he, he's got the pants, the different shoes as well, the mismatched sneakers. I love everything that has gone into the design of Peter B. Parker and Hasbro, you captured it perfectly. Double thumbs up, can of coke, you nailed him. We return now to the Age of Apocalypse with Colossus. Dos Vedania. What a builder figure. I was talking earlier about big chunky builder figures. This... This is what Builder figures should look like. Huge, big, imposing, dominating the shelf. That's what this Colossus does and he looks great doing it. So much chrome, first of all, that's just shiny and eye-catching. I'm like a little magpie. I see that and I'm like, ooh, that looks pretty. Then also they've captured his AOA look perfectly. The boots, the straps, the weird yellow suspenders, the shoulder pad, completely bonkers, totally Mad Max 90s, Makes no sense design, but we do it anyway because it looks cool. That's all we need. It's like similarly in the Age of Apocalypse, Wolverine has like face paint makeup on his face. Why? When do you do that? Do you wake up and fix your face paint? Or are those tattoos? When did you get tattooed? Can you tattoo someone with a healing factor? I don't know. But it looks cool. This guy looks cool. And just, they, they just, blah, ran out of words. Not going to edit this because I'm having too much fun. I love Colossus great bath for a great wave. What's his like sh shortcomings? I think he's only got the one. No. Does he have fisted hands as well? I think he has fisted hands. If he does, that's a good point. <laughs> he only has one face though, but that's the only face you need. What, do you want a quiet contemplative Colossus? No, that would be pointless. You want Colossus. That's what you get. That's what we love. Well done Hasbro. You're done good. Now, when you want to talk about capturing a likeness and a design perfectly, Deluxe Thanos. This is Ron Lim Infinity Gauntlet Thanos right here. This is just absolutely perfect. George Perez Thanos. You want to name an iconic artist who was famous for drawing Thanos looking like Thanos. That's what he looks like. It's so great how they've just captured this wonderful mad titan to perfection. And we've got a lot of Thanoses now. We got so many different versions of Thanos and the fact that they managed to make this character still feel so unique and essential, more to the point, he feels essential. Even if you've got the Walgreens, 
even if you've got the builder figure. This guy still stands as an essential purchase because he is the ultimate iconic Infinity Gauntlet Thanos. Every Thanos comes with a snap in hand. It's just, it's Thanos' thing. But this is the only one that really deserves that snap because this is what he looked like. I always bang on as like a running joke now how I love my Mezco Thanos. Of course I do. But still, he's not really, he, that, that's not the classic Infinity Gauntlet Thanos. This is the classic Infinity Gauntlet Thanos. They nailed it. He's beautiful. So deserving of a high place. You know, while you're roasting chestnuts on an open fire this Christmas, be careful if Jack Frost is nipping at your toes because he might not be. It might be Age of Apocalypse Iceman. What a beautiful figure this is. Hasbro, you know how to tug at my heartstrings and tweak my nose. Just full on translucent gloriousness. Now this dude, I always love Iceman. I love the character of Iceman. I love where he's gone in the comics, what they do, and just what he brings to the table as this kind of light-hearted, jokey kind of character who also, especially in the Age of Apocalypse, can be kind of terrifying. And that's what they've done here. He's gone full Jack Frost and it looks amazing. I loved Iceman in AOA because that was like what you wanted Iceman to be. He's almost like the T-1000 with these crazy morphing ice powers. And here they've gone full bright blue to really make him stand up and stand off from the rest of the characters. Because again, in the comics, he is arguably a little bit more lighter, more, more clear and translucent. But I love they've gone dark blue because it feels more Jack Frosty. And speaking of frost, the frosted tips, full on early 2000s style here. They could have just done the one color, just molded him in plastic, boom, there you go. But then they added the wonderful white shading to his spiky hair and the spikes of ice on the back as well. That makes a huge difference and it really sets him apart as a special Figure. Also, very often when characters are full-on translucent, made of that kind of plastic, they can be a bit gummy, a bit wobbly. Nah, not this guy. Whatever you've done to the formula to make this work, bravo, keep doing it because you've perfected it. You had a couple of misfires here and there like Juggernaut Iceman, he's super gummy, but this, you nailed it. You know, <laughs> Juggernaut Iceman walked, so Age of Apocalypse for Iceman can run, and he's run straight into my heart with the crazy face with like no expression, which is just terrifyingly awesome. Spiky hair, spikes everywhere, carnage type has spiky hands. So badass, so wicked. Love this guy. Back to another figure that I no longer own but want to give props to is Gamerverse Miles Morales. The best figure, in my opinion, from the Armadillo wave. But again, not good enough for me to keep hold of him. The siren call of money was enough to make me part with him. But that doesn't mean that I don't respect how damn pretty he was as an action figure. Again, first of all, two different heads makes all the difference. We got the masked and the unmasked look. Well done, Hasbro. Well done for not making us buy two figures just to get those different looks. McFarlane DC talking to you. So the Gamerverse Miles, what's also great is that the costume is perfect for 616 comics. So if you're not collecting Gamerverse, he can go straight into your comic book collection without skipping a beat. He's slightly smaller than your retro Spider-Man, so they pair up perfectly well together. And then you just look at his costume and all the individual unique sculpting that's gone into that with the textures and kind of the contours and style of the suit. So well made. And then that beautiful metallic red paint on there. The more I describe it, the more I kind of think, oh, maybe I shouldn't have sold it. But still, he's got the electric hand of effects as well that just make it so much more dynamic on the shelf. All the different um, thwipping type effects and the fists and the clawing. They just thought of everything with that figure and they threw it all in for the same standard retail price as any other figure on the line which is so impressive and makes the other figures look bad which is the only problem. I appreciate it's all got to fit in one, bu one budget for a wave but that doesn't detract from the fact that some figures Whew, they look a lot better than others, and Miles looks better than a whole bunch of figures, so he goes very high on the list. Now, a real deluxe gem of a figure from this year, Modok. What a bonkers, unique type action figure. Who would have thought we'd get a deluxe Modok? Well, actually, it's not a bad guess, because, I mean, yeah, Toy Biz did it. But now Hasbro have done it, and they took what Toy Biz did, and then they just expanded on it and made it modern and big and bright and bold. 
What do I love? Big, bright, bold characters. Where do I love them? On my shelf, in my hand, talking about why they should go so high on the top 25 list. The fact he's got two different faces as well, really nice touch. They could have got away without doing that, but they did it and it makes a big difference. Then he's got his wonderful joystick that he can actually move around. And considering this figure is so limited with its articulation because of the design, they did at least give us the articulation where they could do. So at least you can move the legs, you can move the hands, you can have some creativity with how you want to pose him. I really dig the sculpting that's gone into the look and the expression. What's kind of cool is like his his mouth, like his tongue actually looks kind of shiny and wet and like, bleh, you know, and the actual paint on here with the different colors, different colored lips, different colored tongue, teeth, like they've gone an extra step when they could have half-assed it. Even so much so that if you look real closely, you can see he's got different shades of white in his eyes. It's not just plain white. He's got the pupils a different shade, which just, you can't even notice it, but there's like an uncanny thing. Your brain does see it and it makes him look so much more alive. Then with a the super pretty blast effect and the fact that you've got this little, you know, containment part to put his other head in, so much thought went into Modok, and I love the fact that we now have him like this. A figure that was an absolute game changer for this year was the Red Skull from the Villains Wave. So much unique new things going on here. Finally, Hasbro, you're giving us new stuff, and we recognize it, and we appreciate that it is awesome. First of all, the pinless tech. Pin pinless, uh, pinless shoulders? What am I trying to say? Pinless knees pinless elbows. It all works really, really well. I never thought I had a problem with pins besides on Pizza Spider-Man where they're the diff different color and they look terrible. But now that I'm familiar with a normal figure that is pinless, I'm like, oh no, that is, that's really nice. I do dig that. And now we've got this Red Skull who had so many accessories as well. We've got two different heads, both of which look totally unique. You've got the crazy grinning, smiling one, and then you've got this awesome, badass sneering one with the different shading of the red that bring out the contours of the skull that's so cool plus you've got his machine pistol here that actually has the hydra logo on the side such a nice addition all the different hands so many different hands to choose from then he's got the cosmic cube as well they thought let's do red skull and let's do him right and they did and I'm so happy because now they've got this buck that they've already reused with Dormammu, which some people were like, ah, they don't like Dormammu because it is just a reuse of this buck. I like him for different reasons. But this is the one it was tailor-made for with his Hydra jumpsuit. And everything that's going on here with the armband, with the different green on the gloves, it's kind of campy, classic 60s, 70s Marvel Universe, but sculpted and painted and designed in a contemporary style. It's the perfect meshing of the two eras and absolutely nails this amazing figure. And for the penultimate figure on this list, we return to another one that I don't have in hand, but the one that I'm most tempted to repurchase, and that is Spider-Verse Gwen Stacy. Spider-Gwen, what a beautiful, just a beautiful, action figure, especially the unmasked head. The masked head, there's nothing to write home about, to be honest, but the unmasked Gwen head, I think, is phenomenal. They absolutely nailed that design, took it straight from the Spider-Verse cartoon, made it 3D, and it looks so, so good. Then just the Spider-Gwen costume design is just super pretty. Black, white, and shocking pink. That's really cool. Bret Hart colors. Why wouldn't I not love it? But also, she comes with Spider-Ham as well. What Spider-Ham should always have been? Just an accessory. Looking at you, Monster Venom Wave. I can't believe they genuinely charged us 20 bucks just for Spider-Ham. <sighs> But we got a proper Spider-Ham, who is just a simple accessory that comes with Gwen, and he, and he looks great as well. They go so well together, making the whole Spider-Verse team. I'm sure that they will, well, I'm sure that they'll hopefully, that's kind of a contradictory statement, but hopefully they will do the rest of the Spider-Verse team for the people who want to complete that, because so far they've nailed everyone in it, and Gwen is absolutely, in my opinion, the crown jewel of that set. And finally, the Marvel Legend of the Year. What else could it be? Come on! 
got to be the Haslab Sentinel. I know that maybe this isn't a fair comparison. I mean, it's kind of like apples to oranges. One of the whole reasons I did a separate list for Marvel Legends is because you can't always compare sort of, you know, a Mezco or a Mafex to a Legend. It's not sort of a fair comparison, I don't think. The same logic might apply to a Haslab Sentinel and any other Marvel Legend. But you know what? They all fall under the same banner, so they're all being cl included in this list together. And come on. The Sentinel was pretty much everything we wanted. When we were promised this guy a year ago and we slapped our money down based purely on the pictures we had seen, we all hoped like, come on, live up to what we want, live up to what we want, and then we got him and he did! Besides the knees. But <laughs> besides the knees, everything else is absolutely perfect. And honestly, the knees haven't been a problem for me. I say like, you know, touch wood. My one is fine, so therefore I'm gonna judge him according to that. And I do. I I love him. I just have my incredible dis <laughs> my incredible display, if I do say so myself. But yeah, with all the X-Men around the Sentinel fighting this guy, my only regret is that I didn't buy two more. Because, dang it, I, they would have looked amazing and it's an investment. This thing ain't going down in price. Maybe in like 20 years when we get another new Sentinel. Maybe. But until then, I, th that thing is just an investment piece. I should stop talking about it because day from last year, you missed the chance, dude. Don't worry. At least you got one. That's the important thing. And what a beautiful creation he is. All the different heads, the light up effects, the battle damaged hands, all that great stuff I incorporate into the overall diorama. That's another nice piece. The accessories can become part of a diorama. So that's a nice, nice touch. With all the other X-Men flying around it, it's just a wonderful like showpiece, like a centerpiece for your entire Marvel Legends collection. The articulation, the way he's moving and engineered, they really put a lot of hard work and graft into making an incredible action figure. Well worth the price, well worth the campaign, and well worth the wait. The Sentinel is absolutely the Marvel Legend of 2021. And guys, that does it for the top 25 greatest Marvel Legends of 2021. What did you think about the list? Comment below, let me know. Did I forget anyone who deserves recognition? Did I have people on that list who in no way deserve to be there? I'm interested to know what your thoughts are in that regard. And coming up later on in the week, I'm going to have a very fun list, which is the top maybe 10, maybe more, either way, worst Marvel Legends of 2021 because as much as I love to praise Hasbro and the great work they do, sometimes it's fun to just give out about stuff. So that's one to look forward to. But in the meantime, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, then please uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you want to support the channel a little bit further, you can pick up one of these badass looking displaying model behavior t-shirts at the teespring link just below this video and if you do get one then send me a picture on instagram because i love seeing people rocking the merchandise that still kind of sort of blows my mind and if you want to go one little step further in supporting the channel then you can do by going over to my patreon at patreon.com forward slash displaying model behavior. You can throw a few shekels my way and that helps me get out the ridiculous amount of videos that I do. And yeah, I think that's about all the shilling actually. I was just running out of breath. <laughs> my brain was like, no, you definitely have more stuff to shill. No, no, I think, I think I'm done for now. Don't worry, I'm gonna make another video now and do some more shilling in that. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Christmas and New Year's and holiday celebrations, whatever you're doing. Have a good time doing it. And until next time, Keep displaying model behavior. Choose.